Welcome to Steel Talks, podcast by Arsul Mittal, hosted by Applied Futurist Tom Cheeseright. Tom is going to be talking to members of our global leadership team about the topics that will shape our future. In today's episode, Tom chats to Brad Deep, who is responsible for our global automotive business, about the work we are doing to support the shift to battery electric vehicles, the solutions we are providing, and the opportunities the automotive transition presents. Hello, Brad. Thank you for joining me on this episode of Steel Talks. Hello, Tom. It's, I'm very glad to be here. I'm excited to be here. I think we have a great topic to cover. Now, just for the purpose of the listeners, please tell me your roles and responsibility, your official job title. Brad Davey, Head of Corporate Business Optimization at ArcelorMittal. It's, it's a very broad function. I have global R&D, global automotive, global technology, global health and safety, all the corporate responsibility topics, and as well as responsible for all of the investment decisions we make together with the CEO of the company approving all of those. That's a broad remit, and which makes you the perfect person to answer some of these questions. Going to be, we're going to be talking specifically today about the automotive sector. And I wanted to start by looking back a little bit and understanding why we are where we are today, because the last 50 years has seen a huge amount of innovation in material science. When there's been so much conversation about aluminium and about composites, why is it that most cars are still made of steel? Tom, that's a great question. You know, I, I, it is good to look back. I think it's really important to look back and then we can look to the future and, and, and understand the challenges we've got. You know, the automotive industry is the most engineering intensive industry uh, in the world and always has been. The amount of engineers trying to optimize the solutions for automotive and keep it affordable, it's, it's just mind boggling how much has happened. So given that type of environment, the fact that steel has remained a material of choice is a huge compliment to steel and it's, it's an amazing accomplishment. So we've been battling fiberglass, aluminum, carbon fiber composites for the last 50, 75 years. In fact, early in my career, in the early 90s, there was a period where automakers were again considering the move to aluminum. And the steel industry came up with the ultralight auto body. And all of a sudden, automakers took notice again. You know, I'm sure we can all look back on the history and realize that vehicles did not make a big move to aluminum because automakers realized that steel can and does keep reinventing itself. I guess in many ways that competition is a really great spur to do that. It's what drives that continued innovation. That, I mean, drive for lightness, for example. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, you know, people or industries or whatever are afraid of competition. I think we embrace it. Certainly at ArcelorMittal, we embrace it. We know that every day we're out there competing we know that every day our customers are, are going to face new challenges and place new demands on us. And these demands are new because what we did yesterday doesn't meet the demands of today. So these challenges are wonderful. This is what should get us up in the morning. This is what should drive us in everything we do. And at ArcelorMittal, we don't take lightly the fact that we are the world leader in automotive steels. We don't take that lightly at all. And we're not, you know conceited about that in any way. We take that as a position we need to defend and it energizes us for tomorrow. So fast forward another 50 years then, we can expect the design requirements for vehicles to have changed quite a lot. Um, we've got autonomous vehicles, maybe not on the near horizon as some thought, but certainly on the horizon. Will we still see steel as the dominant material choice? So uh, yeah. Yes, you will see steel as the dominant material choice. And I think, you know, you've raised the point. We, we look over the years at automotive and we say, wow, the advancements are faster than ever before. And you think this is going to come to an end, but actually it is not for the foreseeable future. The challenges the automakers have in terms of ecological goals that they have emissions, CO2 emissions through the whole supply chain, not just in the in use phase. The challenges in front of them are the biggest they've ever been. And ultimately, when you look at all those challenges, maybe the biggest one they still face is how can they accomplish all their goals and keep a vehicle affordable for the mass public? 
And so, again, I see, you know, an unbelievable set of challenges. I see that uh, steel has to keep reinventing itself. The beautiful thing about steel and all our physical metallurgists tell us every day is it's the material that has the most opportunity to keep reinventing itself. But I want to raise a second point. It's not just about the steels themselves. ArcelorMittal has spent a lot of time and energy in developing the skills to go right down to vehicle design. So we have full simulation capabilities that can look at uh, the structural integrity of a vehicle and then test it against things such as crash, which is the, uh, the most complicated. And of course, you know, we don't see ourselves as the best automotive designers in the world, but we see ourselves as capable enough to sit at the table and talk to automakers and say, we've studied your challenges, we've studied your problems, and we have a new solution, either in the steel grade itself or in the way the steel's used. So we have many new solutions that we've implemented over the past 10 years and will continue to, which are more about how the steel's used in better and better ways. Things like hot stamping, things like laser joining into multi-parts to be able to to do even larger hot stampings and have some real system cost improvements for the automakers. And then of course, we're still doing a lot of work on coatings, gr uh, steel grades and other solutions. We should explore that slightly because I know that one of the really interesting shifts in automotive manufacturer has, has been to not sort of, you know, weld lots of little parts together that actually works a larger and larger parts. And that's, that's something I know that you've been, you've been heavily involved in ArcelorMittal. Yes. And, and automakers, I will talk about competing materials for a second. Automakers latest interest is in using aluminum in, in die casting. It's a very old technology though, but this, because vehicles are made differently, battery electric vehicles, the whole architecture is different. This now starts to come forward with some attractiveness because they can build these vehicles in a more modular approach. And while the part itself may be higher cost, what they're looking at is some system cost improvements in how they're assembling a vehicle. So it's, it's very good thinking from our customers. It's, uh, it's showing the direction that they have a lot of challenges in producing a cost-effective battery electric vehicle, and they're pushing for new ways to, to get their costs down. But steel has responded. At ArcelorMittal, we are the leaders in multi-part solutions of steel. And we've developed some patented steels for hot stamping. We have a whole family of them and we have grades that others don't have. And we also have this laser welding technology, which is patented as well to make these multi-parts. And what we're finding is the steel multi-parts, again, are being used more and more throughout the vehicle. And we have solutions that are better than the, the die cast aluminum solutions. But these are ones that are on the drawing table today, some of them. And we will see tomorrow that we will send off aluminum again by reinventing ourselves. But I want to give you some facts and figures. These hot stamped solutions of multi-part, we did near zero of these blanks just 10 years ago. And here we will do more than 30 million of these globally. And what's even more impressive is half that figure will be in large multi-part with more than one weld that consolidate large sections of a vehicle. And this, this part of our business is growing extremely fast. In fact, we had about 20% growth globally last year in this business. Bringing it back to the present day, the automotive industry is clearly going through enormous change with the shift to electrification. What's been the immediate impact of that on the steel industry? Yeah, it's a great question. So fundamentally, these vehicles are heavier. The, the, the batteries themselves are heavy. And then of course, the motors and, and everything else when you combine it is producing a heavier vehicle. But more importantly, they've all come to the conclusion that the battery should be located in a box at the lower part of the vehicle, and that needs extra protection. But it also means the vehicle's assembled differently. So they're assembling it in what we call a skateboard type format, where these batteries and the motors and the wheels form the whole base of the vehicle. And then the upper part is assembled 
in, in a more modular fashion than in the past and differently. So the vehicle design is different, it's heavier, and it's being assembled differently. So all three of these present challenges for the steel industry. But a heavier vehicle that needs protection for the batteries is good for steel. Steel is the strongest material. Steel has the broadest range of products that can supply ultra high strength, but also ultra high energy absorption. So what we're finding is that even if some sections of this vehicle are using aluminum because of the protection they need, because of the added weight that needs to be managed in a crash, then we're finding that the steel solutions are being chosen just as, as much as in an internal combustion vehicle. And I do want to mention that steel provides nearly identical weight savings to these other materials and the value of weight savings in a battery electric vehicle, if there's a very small difference, is not near as important as it was in an internal combustion engine. Because they've got regenerative braking, they can recover uh, the energy from this. So from my perspective, it is challenging us on new steel solutions. It is challenging us on our highest, most advanced grades of steel. And steel is the material of choice to solve these problems. And the biggest one they're facing now is how to do all of this in, a, in an affordable vehicle. And automakers are struggling with that challenge and steel has definitely the best cost advantage in supplying all of these other features. And that affordability, I think, is a really interesting point because it has been a big question around battery electric vehicles, but I guess particularly an issue when you're operating in multiple markets. And I know, you know, looking at the the global market for evs there's clearly one country where there's been an explosion in in new manufacturers and the scale of that manufacturer and that and that's china are you seeing some interesting innovations coming from there yeah i think china is uh, is undergoing amazing growth i think the world is now starting to recognize that if i look back at at least five years ago we were bringing our solutions to china after we were introducing them in other markets and now what we see is the Chinese manufacturers have a strong appetite for the latest steel solution. And many of their vehicles are using what I call the, the richest mix of our most advanced high strength steels. So my real message uh, to all automakers is really pay attention to steel. Steel is innovating. Steel has got the solutions you need. And don't be afraid to adopt the most advanced solutions we have, because it seems the automakers that are doing the best are adopting the best technology as quickly as possible. And steel has the best technology for their, for their vehicles. We talked about the electrification of the drivetrain, and clearly part of the driver for that is reducing carbon emissions. But once that's done, where can the automakers look next for savings in the carbon footprint? Yeah, it's a great question, Tom. I mean, the automakers have been focusing their attention on the use phase because it is the majority of the emissions when you look at the full life cycle of an automobile. But they will, and they are already turning their attention to upstream and downstream emissions from the use phase. So upstream is obviously all the materials that go in. Steel is the lowest CO2 intensive material being used today. But of course, all competing materials are decarbonizing. And so we need to make sure that steel remains the lowest CO2 material that goes in for the, the structural uh, aspects of a, of a vehicle. And we're fully confident that steel will remain at the forefront. And again, that will be part of remaining the material of choice. But let's talk downstream. You know, what do you do with a vehicle at end of life? And the world is moving towards circularity, no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, there will be even further enhanced recycling involved in, in battery electric vehicles, but steel is the most recycled material in the world. And the steel industry is fully ready to make use of any and all recycled material in its operations. ArcelorMittal is spending a lot of time now changing designs of its steel products to accept more and more recycled content. And we are fully confident that we'll make all of the grades our customers need from recycled steel as well. Fantastic. I think that's a great place to leave it. Thanks so much for joining me, Brad. Yeah, thank you for your time, Tom. I, I really enjoyed this. Thank you. 